This integral is called the sophomore's dream. It's called that because the solution is pretty amazing. It's almost dreamlike that we get the answer that we do. Now just looking at it, x to the x power or x to the minus x power, you know there's going to be a bit of trickery involved here. Think about just differentiating x to the x. We have to do logarithmic differentiation, an entire technique just to do it. So you know that anti-deriving this thing is going to come with a bit of work. And we're going to start with the usual thing that we would do in situations like this. When we have a variable to a variable power, we often insert an e to the ln. Those inverse functions that cancel out, we can just insert them and take advantage of properties of logarithms. So let's do just that. Let's put an e to the ln in here. So that we can use that property of logarithm, we can take that exponent and drop it down front. Let's rewrite this, same bounds, e to the minus x ln x dx. So how do we integrate this? And this is the first place we need to draw upon some outside knowledge. We're going to use power series here. Remember, the power series of e to the x can be given as this, the sum from 0 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. This is known to be e to the x. It's just we don't have e to the x, we have e to the minus x ln of x. So we'll use this sum, but we'll, we'll replace x with minus x ln x. So now what we have, integral 0 to 1 still, and we have this sum from n equals 0 to infinity. This is over n factorial, but instead of x, we have this entire exponent, minus x ln x. This is all to the n, and we still have dx. Now I'm going to take just a second to rewrite this, this integral. And I'm going to write minus ln x. I'm going to take this to the n. And then we also have an x to the n. This is over n factorial dx. And what we can actually do is we can interchange the summation and the integral symbol. We'll put the integral inside of the sum. And you might ask, well, why can we do this? And the reason is the uniform convergence of this sum. And that's all I'm going to say about that. And at this point, we need to rely on some substitutions. Here's the substitution we'll use. Let's let u be minus ln x. And notice that we would take care of this term, the minus ln x, that would become u, but we still have an x to the n left over. Let's figure out what x is, take the negative of both sides here, so that minus u equals ln x, or taking the e of both sides, we would have that e to the minus u, that's x. Also, of course, when we're doing this change of variables, we need our differentials to change. We need to find what dx will be. This means that dx, the derivative of e to the u is e to the u. Well, it has a negative here, so I need to multiply by a negative du. So we figured out our substitution and our dx, let's rewrite this integrand. So what we have now, minus ln of x, that becomes u, x to the n, well, that will be e to the minus u to the n, so this will be e to the minus nu, using properties of exponents, still over n factorial. We also have dx, dx, we know to be minus e to the minus u. This is du. Now since we've done a u substitution, we need to change those bounds. Those x bounds were originally 0 to 1. We need to change them to u bounds. So when x was 1, according to our substitution here, that would be minus ln of 1, which is 0. So this bound should change to 0. And when x is 0, that would be like minus ln of 0. Well, we can't really take the ln of 0. We know ln of 0 is undefined, but it does spike down towards negative infinity there. So it's kind of like negative, negative infinity. We'll just say um, infinity here. Now, these boundaries aren't quite uh, very proper, are they? M infinity to 0. But there's a nice little fix here. If we just negate the integral, that is the effect of flipping the bounds. So 
I'll just use this negative symbol right here. In fact, let's just make this a positive and flip these boundaries. How about that? Let's just make this instead from zero to infinity and we'll make this positive. That'll be much nicer to deal with. Now, since we have some like bases going on here, e to the minus nu, e to the minus u, let's combine those, get a common base e, e to the minus nu minus another u, we could rewrite this factoring out the u as e to the minus n plus one times u. Looks a lot nicer, I think. So um, we're getting somewhere. There is this slight nuance of the n plus one. I think let's make another quick substitution. Let's just let v be n plus one u so that dv equals n plus one du. The bounds of integration won't change, but what we have now is that u to the n, well, that should change into v over n plus one to the n. I'll simply write that as v to the n over n plus one all to the n. The e to the minus n plus one times u, that'll exactly be e to the minus v, and du, well, that becomes dv over n plus one. We're getting very close. Still need, there's an n factorial underneath here. And actually, all of these n's here, n plus one to the n, n factorial, and n plus one, none of those have a v in them. So they're all constants. We can factor them out of the integral. Let's just pull that out. We have this sum here, zero to infinity still. And on the outside, what we have is one over n factorial. And then I'll just combine these n plus ones. We'll have an n plus one. It was already to the power n, bump it up by one, this will be to the n plus one, times this integral from zero to infinity of v to the n, e to the minus v dv. And so finally, another piece of magic. What is this integral? Astute mathematicians might recognize this as the gamma function, the generalized factorial function. This actually is gamma of n plus one, which is equal to n factorial. So we'll just slip that piece of knowledge in here that that entire integral becomes n factorial. And so what a great thing going on here that this n factorial cancels with this n factorial. We just get the sum from zero to infinity of one over n plus one to the n plus one. And the magic that happens here is when we re-index this. Let's just change the index from starting at zero to starting at one. As I say, if we bump the index by one, we'll bump everything else down by one. This would change to one over n to the n. The n plus ones just turn into n's. And you could even rewrite this using properties of exponents as n to the minus n. And wow, look at that result. It's basically the same thing. The continuous sum turns into the discrete sum. One's x to the minus x, one's n to the minus n. A pretty dreamlike result, if you ask me. Now, if you really liked this, click the video on the screen to watch another amazing video. I'll see you in that.